Welcome to Face to Facts. This is Nick Face. I hope you're all doing well. To my left tonight, Chris Millett makes his return to Face to Facts. Always Only two days left of your high school career. I know. As uh, one career ends, just means I have a bigger role in your life and on this show. I hope you're okay with that, Nick. Yes, I am okay with that. That sounds pretty awesome to me. Now, it's a pretty exciting time around here for all you green teamers, for you Boston Celtics yep. fans or Boston Celtic lovers. Might we're, have to go down that path, too. We're two series down. Two and we two got series one. successful. I know. I mean, and to start another series against the Cavs, the Eastern Conference Finals tonight, uh, only really 48 hours, if that less than, um, from our victory over uh, the Wizards, is kind of just remarkable to me. I thought they would have given the Celts, and I know the Cavs have had almost a week off now, but... It seems a little unfair in the scheduling how the playoff structure works, how the teams aren't given the same number of days off. I know that's an advantage of sweeping uh, a team, mm -hmm. but it just seems to me that if you want to play fairly, if you want to have an even series, you should at least give them at least two days of rest. You're just going to give them 24 hours and expect them to know the system of the other team? I think that that's a fair point. I do. I think that one of the things you look at is is the schedule that the NBA tries to make when going about the playoffs. They want to make sure that they're making their money and yep. they have all the set things. And it's together. all about TV and rights with TNT. It, it is. And it's all. a TV yeah. schedule thing, and sometimes it's an arena schedule too. Per I know that one yeah. of the reasons that. Uh, the Celtics had maybe a two or three days off schedule was, I think, Smurfs on Ice or at the rink. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But some, something along some those concert. lines. There could That's be a concert. There could be another event happening. So I think that that backs things up a little bit too. But what I do not like is how LeBron James and crew for the Cavaliers have nine days of rest before the series even begins. Right. The Celtics have a day. I mean, even I think that, I mean for the Celtics, I'm kind of happy that they don't have rest. Because it just gets them to the right, into the, right into the rhythm. Sometimes Rhythm's already rest there. Can be, that's what you see in the NFL with the bye week. Sometimes it hurts teams because it with, does. Too much, with too much time to prepare, you lose the momentum, you lose sometimes the confidence, and kind of your ego sets in, you get very complacent. What I think is really good is the fact that for, what was I going to say, for the Cavaliers, it's good that they may have a little bit longer of a rest because mm -hmm. you could lose your rhythm. You could lose your... Right, but personally... Just maybe the, your play. The you mega, could be rusty. The mega team that for. they are and the experience that they have, I think that they know better mentally and physically that they need to stay in the game. Uh, and there's no doubt in my mind that LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love, in the locker room, even Tristan Thompson, they're not going to let each other slip. And even tonight, if you see in the first quarter, um, game one being tonight at 8.30... Uh, even if you see something slip, they're going to jump right back on uh, the train, and they will steamroll, in my opinion, uh, my prediction, steamroll the Celtics. Even at the one. Garden tonight. Even, even at the Garden. The Garden is electric, uh, but... See, that, that's what I'm... I don't... See, I, I no, want to disagree I was there with last you. year when they played the Cavs, and, or was it two, two years ago, I believe. Different team. Just the size of LeBron, he looks like a middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. He looks like... Ray Lewis out there. That's what they said when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> but just, just the size of him. It's just pure intimidation. And there's no one better than LeBron in the playoffs. The past five years, he has been lights out. He has not disappointed. He's not let his teammates down. Although as cocky as he gets, um, I was thinking a couple of games ago when he was behind the arc taking a three and he looked like he was taking a free throw. That's the stuff that irks me. But Has he earned the right? Of course. When you're the yeah. best player, you can earn the right to goof off. You can earn the right to do whatever you, you please um, at, the, at the benefit and risk of yourself. You're only going to harm yourself. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I'm not a fan of that ego. That's why I think Isaiah is Isaiah Thomas, uh, the point guard. Uh, Does he have his own player. ego thing, you think, too? Personally, when he's playing, no. Okay. Off the court... With the language that he uses in the press conferences and kind of the quotes that they pull out for the papers, they're trying to make him seem like he has a bit of an ego. You know, when he said how legends are born in Game 7 and kind of he was pointing to himself that he might be that legend. Uh, but then again, he said that he wants to be up the, in the rafters uh, 
he wants his number four to be retired, and he recognizes that the only way you can do that is if you win championships. Well, he's kind of helping them to do it. Right. Now, if they had lost game seven, the Celtics, I mean, fair criticism could have been right on to IT. 100%. Right. I thought game six, that was in his hands. For a lot of the reasons why the Celtics lost that game. And, but coughed personally, it up, coughed Brad, it up with two, two minutes less to go. Brad's final play, Brad Stevens, the head coach, when he drew that up, an abysmal play. You're going to have him take a, like a 35-foot shot to end the game. There was a, he was double teamed. There was no way he was going to make that. Um, they had two opportunities to score two points, and they blew both of them. Personally, I put that on the coach for not drawing up a better play the second time around. Um, but we got to talk about our boy, your boy, Kelly Olenek. Man bun? And the I game think I'm growing one of those out. You would, it would look phenomenal on you. Yeah, you too. But the, the game Kelly Olenek had coming off the bench in Game 7 to essentially clinch, to really clinch, uh, the series against the Wizards for the Celtics was unbelievable. I believe he ended with about 26 points. 26 points he had. Um, draining where, where threes. Where did it come from? Coming in the paint for college. Where, where did this play from Kelly Olenek come exactly. from in Game I, 7? That, the reason I... I've hated That's when Kelly. legends are born, right? The reason I've hated Kelly Olenek all year is because he hasn't proven that to us. He's had this attitude about him all year, how he's this, how he's this rock star, and kind of like just drifts his hair. He's all, he thinks he's a pretty boy when he looks <laughs> he can like... He show up to uh, the Hamptons look, with Tom Brady in the white T-shirt. Looks he like looks like bum. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah. And he is just awful all year except for Game 7. I'm glad he's stuck around, and I'm glad Brad's given him the opportunity but going forward, even though he won us a series, he is not the big man that the Celtics need. The Celtics desperately need a number five guy um, to play that center position and really just to body guys up. And it's not Kelly Olenek, and it's certainly not Al Horford. Well, speaking of rock stars, like you said, who has been the rock for the, for the Celtics in this postseason outside of IT? Who I, else has helped? Who's elevated their game to another Personally, level? Personally, I think it, uh, Terry Rozier has played unbelievable for me. The, in the limited amount of minutes that he's played, he's had a few steals, okay. some clutch rebounds. He's always going after the boards for the rebounds. You see Terry Rozier fly around the court, and it's the energy like that that I personally appreciate as a fan, seeing that someone is trying and not just watching. Well, he's hungry. Uh, yeah, and he he's a young, show, hungry he player. The That's what complacency and... Major, uh, Major League Sports has been something that we've talked about a lot on the show and something that's bugged us both. And it, it's the young players, especially people like Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier on the Celtics right now, that have shown us otherwise and have been lights out. So you like Rozier. That's your, Correct. That's your guy. Who are you going to say? I was going to say it's Avery Bradley. He I think also- the heartbeat of the Celtics goes off of Avery Bradley. It's not IT. IT is in his own category, and I've had my fair share of yep. what I've thought of IT. When the playoffs, before the playoffs began, I, didn't, I did not want to pay top dollar for him. I didn't think he was worth, fair the, enough. Wor- worth the price and everything there. So by looking at the numbers that he's put up there, he's proven to me that he can go out and get the job done. So I would throw big money at him now. But we also have to remember that Avery is kind of old for this team. He was on the 08 team, Nick. He was playing with Pierce, Garnett. No, yeah. no, he wasn't. He was a rookie that season. In 08? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In 08? I believe so. I'm going to have to look at that. I think, I think it was I bl- 10, but I, I think that he was involved in some capacity there. But what I saw, especially from Avery Bradley in this series, is here's a guy that was a little banged up and mm-hmm. hurt a little bit. Remember the last postseason the Celtics had? Yes. He wasn't a part of that matchup. And I think Putting that Bradley this, into this lineup against the Cavs, that gives me a chance to say that they could go one or two games and win. Just throwing it out there. Would you agree also that the reason he's so tenacious, if you will, and playing up to his potential is because he knows what he missed out on last season and watching it from the sideline, like any major leaguer watching a sport, especially the playoffs, uh, and watching your own team lose in the playoffs, irks you so much because you can't do anything and next season when you get there you don't know if I you're going to be able to I think he wants to win. Yeah. Plain and simple. He wants to show people you can win. Like he again, wants... but he's getting old for the team. He realizes that maybe his minutes and also I think Isaiah took his shine away. This was Avery's team. Yeah. And when Isaiah stepped into this system, I think Avery Bradley really was bugged by it. As much as they're buddies, but this is this is professional sports, and everyone wants to shine. Everyone wants their jersey to be 
to be sold in the pro shops. Avery wants to regain kind of his team back. As much as he might say that it's Isaiah's team. Why does it have to be about an individual person, though? Why can't it be about I agree. All? However, let's face the facts here. This is the Celtics. It's Boston sports. It's well, prime it's the time. NBA. It's, it's not just the Celtics. It's the, it's the NBA. There's so much about me. Everyone wants to take the fun. Yes, it's There's all so about me. There's so much about that me factor. And we see that in sports. I, I, I all can't the, stand. And we see that especially that creates an unsuccessful team. I think so. When you have a lot of me characters and the successful teams that we've seen in the past, perfect example, let's look at the Patriots the past couple of years or maybe every year that they've won it. It's never about one guy. It's anyone who's willing to step up. Every press conference last year, like Garrett Blunt used to say, I don't care how many carries I get as long as we're winning. Every year, Tom Brady's taken a significantly significant pay cut, mm -hmm. even though his sponsors pay him a little bit more. But he's taken that pay cut because, pay cut because he wants to spread the wealth mm -hmm. and build a supporting cast. I think... What you see from the Celtics on why they have been successful is, yes, IT likes to take over on, on certain mm. things, but if you also step back and look at it, too, from another perspective, you'll see that it's a team effort. When the Celtics are clicking, it's because Al Horford's doing his job and Bradley's right. doing right. his, and the bench produces their numbers. It's a total team effort. Now, let's not discount Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown. There's two of my other X factors throughout this, next, this series coming up. Brown has a lot to show here right now. He's the right. rookie. He's the one that's coming in with high expectations and all. He needs to now help elevate his game a little bit and show Brad Stevens and fans for the Celtics that he's going to be one of the trusted guys moving forward. Marcus Smart is your wild card, I think. Marcus Smart has had yep. an up-and-down postseason. And I think Marcus Smart realizes that with some of the names that are going to be free agents at the end of the year, if he yep. doesn't perform and produce now, he could be shipping out. Now, before we jump into you-know-what in a second, Marcus Smart is a great example right now where I think that he has got to step up his game in this series coming here. Otherwise, the Celtics may be looking to part ways with him because, at the end. Yes. Because they're going to have to choose. They have to choose Marcus Smart, Rozier, or Avery, or Avery Brown. Yeah. They're going to have to choose. And Avery's, it's going to be Avery or Marcus Smart because personally, Gordon Hayward a Utah Jazz player, yeah. um, who will be a free agent, who the Celtics head coach Brad Stevens coached in college, mm -hmm. it would be a perfect fit for this system yeah. and a perfect play um, for the Celtics to move in free agency and get. That being said, the amount of power forwards, guards, the amount of just, I'll say, skinny guys that can shoot on the team is, I've never seen anything like it for an NBA team. They've got to start moving bodies. Mm -hmm. They're trying to do too many things with the same type of player. If they get Gordon Hayward, two of those three guys, like you just said, are going to have to move, and this is, this is where they're going now, to here's decide. A, here's a and maybe that's another reason that Avery's trying to perform now. Maybe Avery realizes that with his age getting up there, he could be going out. He could. Here's another criticism, talking about the Gordon Hayward front. There's been talk that he may be one of the more attractable mm -hmm. people that come to the Celtics in the offseason. Now, one of the discrepancies that you hear from people in the media and just people talking in general is the fact that the Celtics might be a racist team. Hmm. Now, races come into a lot of plays here throughout Boston, whether it's the Red Sox, the Patriots, the Bruins, Celtics. A lot of people have said the Celtics are a little too white. Huh. Have you heard that opinion at all from anything? I mean, I have not. When you look at the roster, it's a primarily... Why do uh, people have to look at that? As, right. a, as a factor. Because in my eyes, it's not. It's not a factor. You go right. out and you get the guys that fit into right. your system the best. Skin color I mean, I'm doesn't not matter. I'm not sure how the front office operates. Um, but you're right. I think the goal of any franchise, like we've both agreed on, is to win the championship. Mm -hmm. I don't care who is out there at any point <sighs> during the season. I don't either. As long as they're producing, as long as the team is I don't care if it's the winning. peanut vendor. Put them However, out there. Not at the expense of being racist or being kind of this hateful organization. Right. But I don't think just because maybe one race plays more than the other or, or we're trying to go after a white player or a black player, player more often, I don't think... It's one of those touchy might, subjects. A, maybe a coincidental, but I don't, I've personally never heard about that, especially for the Celtics. Um, I mean, they've had black coaches in the past... Um, 
but I don't know. I mean, Gordon Hayward, he is a white guy, but he would be a perfect fit. In I my think opinion. it would be a perfect fit. I absolutely think that. And it is one of those touchy subjects because, unfortunately, in the Boston area for teams, we ha- a lot of fans mm-hmm. and a lot of people see the Boston sports teams as being racist with slurs that are thrown out at games. And we're with, talking about the Red Sox. So Red Sox and, and Bruins yeah. have had their fair share of the certain Bruins things fans with Malcolm unlike, Subban and stuff. The it's Bruins sick. fans are like un, any, it's sick. unlike any other. So yes. the Bruins fans, you're in your own category. But you as a fan, me as a fan, I can say that I'm disgusted that mm. unfortunately race has to play into those factors right there. Go out and I mean, win. this isn't the Civil, civil War time. Yeah. This isn't the 1950s and 60s here. We're all created equal here. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, there are some people that still live in the 50s and 60s where they judge things on the color of skins. It's ridiculous. But I'm just hoping that Gordon Hayward, who is a person and a player that I right. have long wanted on the Celtics. And I think Brad wants to coach him again. Isn't, isn't part of that whole, oh, well, if the Celtics get him, they're going to be all too white and that just can't happen. I don't want to see that. Get them out there. Put your best team forward. I want to switch gears a little bit. Gordon Hayward being coached by Brad Stevens, who is currently the head coach for the Celtics and who's coached by him in college. We've seen a kind of different Brad Stevens this postseason. We've seen, we've seen kind of this fired up Brad Stevens that was never present in the regular season. It is something that I've gotten on Brad's case. I'm not friends with him, but screaming at my TV is getting on his case for me. He gets you fired up? Just walking really? around, just, oh, just because he doesn't say anything. It's never, it's never emotional for, for Brad. It's never, in, until this series against the Wizards, yep. where he was screaming at the ref, screaming at Kelly Olenek, screaming in the huddle. Finally, Brad has stepped into his own shell, and I think he's almost a little bit intimidated by some players on the team, but he's finally realizing that he's got to win, or he might be going, even though he's... Pro- He's gotten progressively better every season, but Brad needs to take some ownership and take some leadership. Uh, oh, I think it's safe just, to say that he's earned his spot back for next year. He's earned his spot, but I'm just talking about, I don't know. Personally for me, when I, when I see in a head coach, I want, I want to see them fired up and passionate as much as the players are, as okay. much as the fans are. Maybe it's just his charisma. Maybe it's just his character, his, his kind of... Uh, his sideline uh, walk, but it's just, he just seems like very, very nonchalant. Maybe he's just not trying to, go ahead. Let me put it this way to you. I'll keep it real simple. Would you rather Brad Stevens or John Farrell as your coach? Correct. Yeah. Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens. John Farrell. Yeah. Brad Stevens. Fair enough. I get, I get your point with having a coach that's passionate and fired up with stuff like that. I think a little bit Stevens was a little scared. That's what he was intimidated because yeah. he'd been losing he was so far in the playoffs when he got there. Yeah, he had not won anything. Yep. This time now he has what eight wins? Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight wins right now in the playoffs. So he's building up his resume here that says, "Oh, look, I can actually win here." Right. That's good. That's what he needed to do. And I believe, honestly, we might. He's see- the right guy, Chris. He is the right guy for this team. I will tell you that. Mm-hmm. I'm a big Brad Stevens fan. I like the way that his style fits in with players. I like how it seems like the players respond well to him. You may not think like they, the they, vocal They thing certainly there. did in college when he built Butler's program from the ground up and led them to so two Final Fours consecutively. Right. That was unbelievable. Interesting enough, though, if Gordon Hayward steps into this system, do you think that Brad will favor him in any way and kind of, no, kind I don't. of create the Butler, the Butler scene again and kind of go off? Go off kind of that underdog I don't, mentality. I don't. Is it still IT's team? I think that they, they've realized that it's still I, IT's team if he's a part of this crew. And then I think that Hayward becomes another complimentary piece yep. that can add on and help the Celtics. Hopefully next year the goal is win Eastern Conference or win the finals. Mm-hmm. Right now the goal was to get to this next round, the conference finals. That was the goal. Right now whatever happens here is pretty much gravy, I think. Also interestingly enough, the Celtics, uh, I believe it was Jay Crowder, uh, said yesterday, two days ago in a press conference, how they're considering themselves the underdogs in the series, even yeah. though they're the number one seed and Cleveland is the number two seed. Yeah. Well, I mean, they should be the underdog. But I'm just saying, as a, as a mental uh, standpoint, is it better for the Celtics to go in as a hungry underdog? I, or I completely to have, agree. But 
being slightly cocky and slightly um, confident in your skills goes a long way. And I'm not, I'm not doubting that they're not, but when you, when you openly admit to the media saying like, yes, we realize that they, they are the better team on paper and they've, they've produced better numbers in years past, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, I like I like to be the underdog. I, personally, I like any team that goes into something as the underdog sometimes because you have a little bit more of that that kick butt mentality, that give it all, like prove people wrong kind of style. That's what I like about it. So Fair. I wouldn't be happy. I, I'm happy that they're at that. Um, that's that's just my personal side is on that. Now previewing the series, they'll open up on Wednesday night. The, that's tonight, our pregame show. Correct. And then they'll go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. It's pretty much every other day. So the schedule will be pretty much uh, set with not having too many days off with anything. You just have one day. They're 8.30 games. They're a little later uh, for yeah, some reason. a little reason. bit past your bedtime there, Chris. I know. I know. have to have a little extended curfew. Might. But I know that's the 8.30 games. It's just, I don't know. And so I the guess whole country the can watch. Time. And so West Coast people at 6.30, uh, 5.30 out there, excuse right. me. Just like the, I don't know. When I, the families, the young kids, the real fans aren't going to be watching. That's, that's, what something. That, that's the bad thing about the West being on the East Coast. Yeah. Is we have to listen, you know, if the Red Sox are on the West Coast, whatever team it is, they have the 10 o'clock start sometimes for stuff. So you just got to have to suck it up. Fair. That's why we're the most tired people. I know. We, I'm a little tired right now. East Coasters as, as well. Well, we do need to still stick with the Celtics here because it's been a Celtics week. Monday Correct. night was a great win to get to the conference championship. Now is the chance for the Celtics to pick that lottery pick and get the number one. Do we have any news on that? In case you didn't know at home, we do have the number one pick next year. That ping pong ball rolled at number one. And the video of uh, Celtics fans in Boston with the commentators, yeah. Scal, and they were going crazy. However, I don't think that there is anyone in this draft that is worth picking at the number one spot. Ooh, for okay. for that reason, for that reason, I believe that we need to trade that pick mm -hmm. and get a superstar big man. Okay. We have not had a big man since the Kendrick Perkins, Kevin Garnett era, and it is something that we are desperately, desperately needing, and it's especially shown in this playoff series. With uh, what was his name? Uh, Botar, Bogart, uh, last series for the Wizards. Botar, yeah. Bot bodied in the paint. We have no Gortat. paint presence. Gortat. 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 We have no paint presence. There's, what are you going to get? Fultz? What are you going to get? Look, ball? Like, there's just no one that's worth changing your system. You don't have enough research on them? What's up? You don't have research to know a little bit about what they've done, what they've done in their college careers and all? I, I've, I've looked at it, but I mean... Because I like Fultz, I'll just tell you that right now. I like him. I think he has the best chance out of all of them to be a stud. We have um, too many people like him, though. Avery's like him. But, like, I see a lot of IT. Like, what? why is it worth getting another, like I said, kind of like a skinny all-star shooter Okay. at the expense of not getting another Something that you need. You need a big man. It's like the Red I'm Sox, not going to disagree with you. Couple, you need a big man. The past but why can't seasons, you go out in free agency and get a big man? If you get Gordon Hayward, you're not going to get anyone else. Gordon Hayward isn't the big man. No, I don't think he is the big man. We're going to trade for DeMarcus Cousins, and that's a whole nother If they case. wanted Cousins, they would have had him originally. Because right. the, what, what was it, Sacramento at the time? They didn't get a good package for that at all. Yeah. They just wanted to and get rid of that as best that, they There's could. rumors that Kevin Love has visited Boston a few times, and... I'll believe that when I see it. That's never going to happen. But again, trade the pick. Build for the future. And I know that they did that with, the, with how they got this pick. They got this pick by trading uh, Garnett and Pierce to the Nets. Um, and this is kind of how they're building their system. But there is no one. I fold, no. Just, I'll pass. So, so if you wanted to trade year, the number one pick, just saying that you were Danny Ainge and you would trade her Danny, yep. and you wanted to trade number one, what do you want for it? What do you want? At is least, it, is it is it least. out of my out of the element to go say go knock on the New Orleans Pelicans door? Hello there. Who what? I want Anthony Davis. Is that out of the element? No, it's not. But I think the 76ers would be more apt to trading kind of maybe a Joel Embiid or. But a, that's not worth one. 
That's not worth one. Seven He's not two. that good. Seven two. You could have got Embiid for Kelly Olynyk probably. All I'm saying is you need size. You need size. You're I'm a not disagreeing You're with a that. very, very small team. And by this adding Fultz pick, into the pick, it's just, ugh. This pick is so, it's so juicy and it's so good for the Celtics because now they become a premier destination for somebody to go. Not That's when you this, add, no. You don't think so with one? I 100% think so. The Celtics are proving to people right now that they're a force. And whoever is out there in free agency, like Al Horford did from last year, they're going to want to come to Boston now. That's what I Fair think. Fair enough. Fair enough. Before, people didn't want to come here. It's cold. I it's, know. it's miserable sometimes in the winter and stuff. They want to go to a, de a destination like Golden State, Miami, uh, all those. A vacation city. Vacation cities. Now, if you, you, we have number one. If just, you keep number one, if you do keep it and you keep it false, that's going to trigger more interest with trades getting done and free agents coming forward, I think. That's just my side. Here's my thing. Gordon Hayward or Fultz, if you had to pick one or the other, if you had to give up the pick and you don't get have a proven— though. I know, but if you get a proven— Because Gordon Hayward's not going to want to come into the system with another superstar coming in— How do we know and that? —and compete with IT. Because, again, you need to be realistic about these superstars' egos. They want to be the center of attention. Is Gordon Hayward a superstar? In my opinion, he's certainly an all-star. It's either going to be him or IT's team. If he's going to have to compete with a rookie coming in, he's going to say, shoo, shoo, no, I'm okay. done. And if, again, when you, build, when you put so many superstars on a team, especially look at Golden State, they've struggled. The reason that they've, they've had a worse record all, uh, this year rather than last year, is because they don't know whose team it is. Okay. Because it's not Steph Curry's team anymore. Right. Kevin Durant's in the mix. They have more people in the mix, and when you start to add all, all those different styles, and certainly those players might have complemented the systems that they were in and the teams and the cities that, that they were playing in, but when you put it all together, it gets very complicated. Mm -hmm. And my, that, That's just how I'm thinking about it. You're going to have a lot of people wanting to do certain things. It'll have a lot of difference in opinions. And that's why we saw Golden State struggle at the beginning. They didn't know who they were. They're going to struggle with, oh, what's my role? Do I take the final shot? Can I take this three? Is he going to yell at me? I can see that. You, got, you only have, I, in my opinion, two superstars, two, maybe three. And that's got to start. That's got to be IT uh, or Hayward uh, as a forward. And you need someone, a big, big center. That's my opinion. So Embiid would be one of your options. Kevin Love. Someone cousins. with size. I don't care. Anyone with size. Anyone with size. All right. That's a, that's a different way. That's a different perspective to look at it. You have your you size. You personally would like the pick. Why? I like the pick. Why? I like the pick because obviously, number one, having him in there can help really rejuvenate your team and make it Fair. more of a destination sort of thing. Fair. I do think that there would be a lot of... Um, There'll be too many of the same parts. I right, do agree right. with that. But I think you'd have to pick and choose something. That's when you have to pick Marcus Smart, DeRozan, or Avery Bradley. You it also means that, that like Tyler Zeller goes. Olenek could be on the bye way bye. out. Bye-bye. Olenek bye. could be on the way out. Good. He can take him and his man bun and go. <sighs> get, a, get the chop on the yeah, way get out. get the chop out here. That's just how I feel on that. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm very happy with the pick. Don't get me wrong. The only one I would take, though, out of that group, if it was to be chosen, we didn't discuss this, false would be absolutely the one that I would take in the draft. You're not getting ball, are I you? I want nothing to do with ball. Nothing. Yeah. That, that family Magic scene. Magic Johnson can just That family take, scene is insane. That's insane. You couldn't deal you don't with the want that, in yeah. Boston. No, no way. You couldn't deal with that. So that's basically the gist of what it is. Outside of one and two with everything, even the top four, there really isn't a comparison False is clearly 100% the number one. So Agreed. A lot of comparisons to Russell Westbrook. Will that translate into the NBA? That's to be seen. We'd have to see that. We'll see what Danny Ainge does with the pick. But right now, the Celtics are riding high, feeling good about themselves with the big win Monday. Getting the win with the lottery on Tuesday night. Let's go for the, uh, the, the trifecta here. Let's do it. Let's get number three with the win tonight against the Cavaliers. That game is at 8.30 on T. And T. Changing gears. 
We're going to talk about the Red Sox right now. Okay, oh the Red Sox. Yeah, get you the get most your popcorn boring, ready. boring thing going on. Get right your popcorn now. ready. Um, Just be a one minute. Segment. I don't really know where to start with this team because there's so many things that it's May. Just are, it's May. It's 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 not the fact there of them aggravating me. I think I'm more agitated with the team. Because, because there's so many things that so many I see. moving parts, too. It's the, the, the that, I could, that I could step. This is, I'm just going to tell you how I feel, and then I want you to do your thing. There's so many things that I feel like if I was the general manager, if I was the manager or something, I could step in and make a different change, and it would be fine. Unfortunately, that's not the case. No, I'll probably never be the Red Sox manager <laughs> or anything, but I feel maybe you feel the same way at home. Not sure, but I just feel like I could have a better solution at third base than the Red Sox have right now. I could have a better That's solution as my that. eighth inning guy in the bullpen right now. I could have a better ch choice at putting a lineup together and executing it one through nine. I could have a better feel of the starting pitching with just looking at the results that are happening yeah. right at the blink of an eye on your TV screen or yep. view. What do you think? The third base situation, Hernandez is starting one day, and then we got... Um, Rutledge yeah. is in, and then he can't field. Dude, get a third baseman. <laughs> and Brock Holt would be starting, but he's all he's got over vertigo. the place. Le legit all over the place. I think Farrell hit him off the head. That's legit why. all over the place, and he would be the, the perfect solution, but unfortunately, I don't know what's how what his time is. Is Pablo is. Sandoval still the solution at third? Oh. <laughs> Isn't it a joke? I it's, remember, this is insane. You, we... When have you ever heard about this in professional sports where you give a player a full year to put themselves in shape <laughs> and they come back almost in worse shape? Yep. Worse mental shape. He, he robbed the McDonald's. I'm like, oh my God. It, the, the fact that they're paying him $17 million to eat burgers, yeah. go to the pub, yeah. and not play is bananas to me. Bananas. But... The real solution to the Red Sox right now, it, I can't wait till we get into the summer and the Red Sox July slump comes into play. Mm -hmm. If you, they're losing divisional series Left this right. early, and it killed them two years ago. Killed them. You need to win the games now. I get so tired of hearing people say, oh, it's only April, it's only May, don't worry, they'll be fine. No, they won't. Like, wake up. Wake up. What are people, what is wrong with people? The, but the thing is, the season, the MLB season is far too long. It is too long. The playoffs should that. be in uh, August and September. Yeah. <sighs> is the time of play for the game a problem too? Yeah, absolutely. No one's going to sit down for three hours. Legit. No I mean, I know they lost 11-2 to on Sunday in that rainy, pathetic and game. And they're trying to speed up the game Chris, with the two-minute rule. it rules, lasted but... four hours and 42 minutes. It's Imagine what if you're sitting in their there. Right freaking mind. It's going to take gonna five hours out of the day. And watch that clown fest go on. What's like, remarkable come is that there's, there was actually people who doing it and stuffing their face with hot dogs while doing it too. Another beer, please. Yeah. <laughs> ten dollars here, ten dollars there on every single. I wonder beer. why think people say things to Adam Jones from that. It's because of that. And, but the thing is, it's just like speed up the damn game. Oh, we're going to give the pitchers two minutes to warm up. That does nothing. Why can't they all just get out the ball like Chris Chris Sale is a dream to watch. Have you seen his play? He takes the ball in his glove, he you know gets it's in a his set, and throws the damn ball. Hold on. Like, what's wrong with that? You know no, i got to lick dream. my fingers. i got to make sure my hair looks right. Make sure my hat's adjusted what perfectly. Also, hey, what also, speeds, what also speeds up the games when Chris Sale is pitching is the Red Sox lack of batters. Oh, absolutely. Oh, let's Chris Sale's pitching. Chris Sale's we don't pitching. have we don't have to hit today. No, 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 oh no my wood God. necessary for that. His losses have come one, two runs. They are brutal to that man. Mm -hmm. I'm like you I want to know what his his locker room uh, talk to his fellow players is. <laughs> he probably throws bats, throws his gloves, reams them out, swears at them. No, he tears them. jerseys. <laughs> I would I would too if I'm throwing a <laughs> Absolute he diamond cuts him of the up game. With his scissors. If I'm throwing a gem of a game, yeah. get out of here. Go, score at least a couple runs for me. All right, so we've been a little negative right now. <laughs> it sucks. Let's let's take a deep breath. Yep. I don't think they're gonna win the division though. Let Let's figure out what the good things are right now. What's a good? Oh, what's boy. a good thing? Is there a good thing? I have a few. Bogarts, Mookie. We're getting there. 
I think, I think number one to be happy about is definitely Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is a legit stud. Yep. You put him anywhere in your lineup, he is a solid top 10 player in Major League Baseball, yep. I think. I think that that's great. They need more of that. What I really love is the fact that they put Mookie back into the leadoff spot where he belongs. He's not a three hitter. Yeah, when Dummy ben Farrell. When Ben Attendi was, I mean, he's got the speed too. You got to use him on the base pass. Mookie? Start sending him. Start Mookie, yeah. letting him steal. They're not when, stealing enough. When They're Ben not. Attendi was leading off, he's a good hitter, but he's more of either he's either a two I don't, or he's your nine. Ben Attendi never let off. They had Ben Attendi at two. But that's Pedroia's spot. I'm sorry. Right. When he, they had him at cleanup and even six for like five games in a row that he was batting but in the six. But that's part of Dopey. Dopey Farrell has no clue on where to put these guys. Mookie leadoff. Pedroia second. Bogarts. Bogarts three. Ben Intendi four. Hanley when he wants to play yeah. five. Uh, Moreland. Moreland six. Vasquez. Eight more, uh, Vasquez eight or nine. Vasquez is cooling off a little bit for me. I actually like Chris Young more than Jackie Bradley right now. Okay. So I might put Young as my seven, Vasquez as my eight, and then the, whoever's Pils playing the third. Pillsbury Doughboy at or, third yeah, base. Yeah, whoever's playing third. My God. If, if that's what you Panda do. Isn't but eating. there's been no consistency, and that's why these guys don't produce. You're putting them into these situations. Where they're all screwed up. They don't know where they're going, what's going on. That dopey in the in the dugout. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing today. We're just riding it out. I don't like Rutledge. You don't like Hernandez. You don't like Devin Marrero. Yeah, Marrero. That was the Get it together. They have the second highest payroll in baseball. They I'm desperate. Sick of it. They desperately need Brock Holt back. I don't even think that's the answer. I don't think that's the answer. He would be, he's a lot. The he's answer, a lot consistent. The, I mean, he's not a third baseman. He's a middle infielder. And he's an outfielder. The answer, number one, yep. I would fire Farrell in a heartbeat. I would give him his day. Right now, goodbye. I am so they done. They need a I'm kick so in the butt I'm right so now. sick with new managers, though, with especially the Red Sox. The front office, that is a complete, that's a kick in the face to Dombrowski. Dombrowski doesn't want to do that for his, for his personal I, ego. I think though. Dombrowski deserves criticism. Put him on the hot seat. Yeah. What's he done here since being here? Trade Ship. all the prospects away. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Trade them all away. He's wiped out AAA. Wiped it out. We have one good prospect left right now, and that's Devers as third base. Insane. And that guy's in double A. Even still in the system? Yeah, but he doesn't know how to yeah. throw a pitch anymore. And they traded Kopech, that hothead. Yeah, uh, they got Kopech, yep. traded him. They got rid of um, Jan Mankata. But I'm all right with that. That was actually one of the moves that I would have done. Mankata and Kopech to get Chris yeah. Sale, that's fine. I have no issue with that. The Kimbrel one, Kimbrel right now is fine. Hopefully that continues. But the one that I am still aggravated beyond hell with, and I just used that word, but whatever. Price? No. Drew Pomerantz. Yeah. That one right there. That was just trash. Trade away one of your best pitching prospects for that <laughs> bum. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What does Jared Carabas call him? Ew, Pomerantz. Ew, He's Pomerantz. Just, he looked very just weak on the mound. <clears throat> Soft as a baby's bottom. Yep. Brutal. Cannot pitch in the big market. Cannot. But why will, is it me as the fan noticing this? Because it's always not, the fan. And not the dodo brains. It's always the fan that first. are in the that make the big calls. It's I, because I we care more, I believe, and they care more about the dollar sign. Could. That's all they care about. Well, I know that's why Lucino brought in um, uh, Shamu the whale from third base with the Giants. That Honestly, I think Shamu the whale would actually be playing better over there. I really do. <laughs> You know, you just throw him the fish, and he gobbles it up like the ball, eats it away, and he just hucks it up over there. Oh, that's gosh. that's. I just I think he would. I, I think he would. I agree. He'd I actually be all excited for that. I know. So. Uh, well, well, it's gonna be a very long summer with the Red Sox, and I'm not looking forward to watching. I. That's I why I'm happy to. I am looking forward to right going now. to the games. I am not looking forward to watching and sitting through the summer slump. That's all I'll say. Yeah. I'm happy the Celtics are still in it. Yeah, thank, because if thank, the Celtics the were Celtics out, are still in oh boy. Because then the oh attention boy. has to shift to this yep. clown show. Yep. Now, yes, they did get a win, which was Tuesday night against the Cardinals. Rodriguez has been one of the positive signs pitching-wise and all, so that's been good. Um, Chris Sale's been a plus. <coughs> Rick Porcello has been hit or miss. They don't really have a four or five star. They just don't. Steven Wright out. I've never had one. Drew Pomerantz since not the there. Tim Wakefield days. When is David Price coming back? Oh boy, I don't know when he feel, 
when he feels good about himself. You have to ask his dog, Astro, when that's yeah. coming. Hey, are you coming? Come on, come on. The last week in spring training, you, you're, you're feeling a little tight in the shoulders. Like, the reason he went, it was, was it was too cold. Now that it's finally hot out, thank God that we have some great weather, he'll finally <laughs> come back. He didn't want to play. Let Sale take the role. Let Sale be but the star. But there's too many players on this team. Again, oh, it's too realized, cold. I can't no, play. He Bogart realized that he, time like he that. realized he didn't need to be the star, and he got complacent, and he said, "Fine, I'll take a step back. I'll go up for two months. Then you'll miss me." And we miss him. Yeah, we He's do right. miss him because you can't win it all just with Chris Sale and everybody. So unfortunately, hopefully, not. Price is back soon so they can make that happen. Need him by the All-Star break. Bullpen, even without the two guys, Carson Smith and Thornsburg, they've been, I mean, they may never get by. Somehow, some way, they're getting If we had Thornsburg by. battle, we'd lights out. He should be the setup guy to Kimbrell instead of Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly is a starter. Joe, when they Joe made Kelly's Joe, a stiff. When they made Joe Kelly, this is like what I don't understand. Like They bring in players. Oh, no, they is, have Ricky he, Vaughn from is the he a relief? League. They decide that they're going to put it on themselves to decide whether he's a reliever or a starter. Pick one. Pick one you know and stop you know screwing funny with, with the guy's Kelly? head. You know what's funny with Joe what? Kelly? Like, all these people get so infatuated with, oh, he throws 101 miles an hour. Oh, my goodness. He throws the straightest arrow in baseball at 109. Hits a dart right there. Hit me. That's what the ball says. Mm. Come hit me. He has no control, and that's why the Cardinals it's parted wild. ways with him. They saw it also far before we did. Alan Craig. Yep. Don't even get me started on that one. They saw it. He's, he's in AAA right now for the so Red Sox. So is Rusney. There's yeah. like $25 million stash in the yeah. start of uh, and, and, and down in Pawtucket. Yeah. Go watch their yeah. games for yeah. $5. Have fun, Lucino. Lucino's That's the... insane how Castillo is batting. Down. And Craig. Bust. Can you imagine a veteran just swinging the bat in the AAA? Pawtucket bus he doesn't stocks. care. He's collecting. He probably has a nice waterfront house. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Live in the cushion life. Please. Cushion life. Please. Hopefully things get better. We don't want to be the doomsday Hopefully the people. Celtics, Hopefully the Celtics can be our champion in this series and move on. Are there any other sports we need to cover? Bruins don't have anything going on. Bruins are out. Cel uh, the Patriots. And horse racing. The Preakness is this Saturday. Horse racing. My, my pick is in. Conquest Mo Money. He'll be in uh, the 10 post. What quest? Conquest oh. Mo Money. Gotcha. Okay. I think he's going to upset Always Dreaming. Mm -hmm. Always Dreaming was the Kentucky Derby winner. Cool. And uh, was trained by Todd Pletcher. Tune in this Saturday at 645 NBC. Right. I think that will do it here for our episode of Face the Facts. We want to wish those that are uh, getting into to the graduation time, we want to wish you a happy graduation and everything there. And the summer is pretty much right here for us, so we hope it's going to be a good summer around here. Enjoy the warm weather. This is Nick Face. Chris Millett. We will see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. See you later. Have a good night.